Hello everyone and welcome to module 2 of this unit. Today we will be looking at how traffic management measures can support mass services. As mentioned in the last session, this unit has three modules. This is module 2 of the unit. In this module, we provide some examples of various traffic management measures along with some implementation results. So what is traffic management? In simple terms, traffic management refers to the measures employed to preserve traffic capacity and improve the security, safety and reliability of the overall road transport ecosystem. Traditionally, traffic management is generally focused on road infrastructure. Some examples of traffic measures include incident management, traffic signals, speed and route guidance. Traffic management, however, needs to evolve taking into consideration the multiple stakeholders in a mass value chain. Mass can complement and improve traffic management in several ways for both public transport authorities and transport operators while also supporting urban traffic measures, planning and capacity management. It must also be emphasized here that mass is not just limited to individual mobility but the approach can also be applied to the business world and the movement of consumer goods. Automated ports are expected to change the last mile transport problem and therefore have a significant impact on parking demand requiring better tailored road information. Access to such dynamic travel patterns could lead to a more efficient traffic management. So what role does mass play in traffic management? Well, data from mass can be utilized by traffic management teams to gain relevant insights into how the transport system is being used. This ensures greater optimization of the available capacity while offering tailor-made data-driven services. In order to understand and improve traffic management in the context of mass, the following questions must be answered. What data is needed at every step of the journey process? Who owns the data which can be used to improve user services? Where are the gaps in obtaining this data? Who are all the stakeholders involved? And finally, can this data be used to improve performance, especially during peak demand? Answering these questions can help in figuring out how to operate a more efficient transport system, providing road users with all the information they need for a smooth travel. The figure in this slide shows the three dimensions of mass encompassing various elements discussed so far. Coming to transport policies, transport policies play an important role in how future traffic is managed in the context of mass. In the previous unit, we saw examples of how transport policies affect the uptake of mass. Future mobility patterns will continue to change due to a variety of reasons, ranging from demographic shifts, flexible work environments, new technologies, trends in the economy and technological innovations. Traffic management of the future needs to be flexible with a quick response to changes in supply and demand and achieve a wide range of transport policies. Transport policies can have a significant impact on the transport demand as well as the transport mode choice for road users. Another important aspect to consider for the successful accomplishment of various transport policies is the data collection and sharing needs must be effectively integrated into future traffic management systems. There are two major problems faced by cities worldwide. These are rapid changes to the types of urban mobility and rapid urbanization and its impact on city environments. In order to tackle these issues, efficient solutions in terms of urban mobility management are required. Here in this slide, one such example of a solution for urban mobility management is shown. My City, developed by Swarco, is a software solution for small, medium and large cities. It is able to support and provide many functionalities such as monitoring, 
automation, data analytics, and traffic control. My city has been built to evolve as mobility evolves. This can allow it to proactively respond to changes in urban mobility trends and the technology used to support them. It also supports data sharing and processing from different systems in an urban environment. My city acts as an aggregator of mobility relevant data sources and is a single point of contact for all interfaces. A link to the My City slide can be found at the end of this presentation. Now we take a look at some examples of traffic management measures for urban traffic. The first measure is traffic priority. Traffic priority is a measure where traffic signals are adjusted in order to provide priority to certain vehicle types such as public transport or emergency vehicles. With the emergence of vehicle to infrastructure communication or V2I, traffic priority can be granted through the cooperative ITS architecture. The figure in this slide shows the blocks for priority provision under the CITS architecture. The end users for priority can be public transport, cyclists, e-bikes, last mile vehicles, etc. End users request priority at an intersection by sending the location to a traffic light controller and receive information related to the traffic status via an ITS application. Depending upon the level of importance, a priority can be either conditional or unconditional. Once the request is validated, the end users receive information about the traffic light status such as time to red, time to green and speed advice to ensure that it can drive through the green light without stopping or decelerating. There are many major benefits of traffic priority. Priority at traffic signals is an important measure to increase the efficiency of urban traffic management. In case of public transport priority, it makes them more attractive due to faster travel times and improved service regularity. Higher passenger satisfaction is complemented by additional benefits including improved energy efficiency and reduced pollution. In a CITS framework, they also reduce costs for hardware and maintenance as detectors are not required to continuously monitor the position of these vehicles. The figure in this slide shows the example of bus priority. The bus has an onboard unit to communicate, send and receive information from the traffic light controller. In this slide, results from a pilot study are shown to highlight the performance of emergency vehicles or EV priority. Green flow for blue lights, a smart mobility application developed by the Swarco Peak Traffic Group allows EVs to receive green light at the intersections they approach and this was used in this pilot study. It was observed that priority was granted to EVs 9 times out of 10 which shows that the priority service was working well. An improvement of 18% in average speed and 46% in the number of stops was observed when compared to the baseline scenario without the usage of the priority app. Hence, it could be said that the priority service was successfully able to reduce EV delays, highlighting the benefits of the CITS in improving EV operations. Next. We move on to another well-known traffic management measure known as Green Light Optimized Speed Advisory or GLOSA for sh in short. GLOSA system is a recommendation of an optimal speed for a vehicle to pass a traffic light without having to stop. The basic principle of GLOSA is to calculate a speed recommendation based on the distance of the vehicle to the traffic light and the time to the next signal change. The messages are sent to the road end users are signal phase and timing messages or SPART messages. GLOSA use case has been extensively researched at a European level and results indicate that GLOSA can potentially have lead to a 7% reduction in fuel consumption. In this slide, the results from a real-world case study is shown here to highlight the effectiveness of the GLOSA service. 
the glossa system was tested on a string of intersections in helmand netherlands overall 90% of the connected vehicles participating in the trial received speed advices and 95% of this group of connected vehicles that received a speed advice were able to pass the intersection without any delay this is an extremely encouraging result as it shows the effectiveness of the glossa system in reducing the delays for vehicles at intersections compared to the vehicles that received speed advice 80% of the vehicles that did not receive a speed advice experienced delays at the intersection these vehicles had to slow down leading to severe braking or standstill at the intersection finally we take a look at a traffic management measure specifically targeting buses dedicated bus lane is a specific traffic management measure to reduce delays for public transport and encourage their use as the name suggests the measure works by restricting lanes for the use of buses for a certain time and day this increases the average speed and travel time reliability of buses due to no interaction with other road users these lanes also have their own dedicated traffic signals providing them priority however a major drawback of this strategy is that the total traffic capacity of the roads decreases as one or multiple lanes are reserved for the use of buses and they may remain unused when there is not enough bus traffic a variation of dedicated bus lanes is dynamic bus lanes in this case lanes are dedicated to buses only when and where the buses need them otherwise they are open for all vehicles to use this is done by designing short patches of bus lanes on the road that end slightly upstream of the intersections in this way buses can overtake part of a queue at the intersections while not reducing the capacity significantly so in this presentation we discussed at how active traffic management measures can support mass services in the next and final module we take a look at the concept of livable livable cities in the context of mass thank you and please feel free to reach out at the email addresses mentioned here if there are any questions